Hey there, everybody. So good to be here today. I'm Joe Bender, a community manager over at Hero, doing everything I can to empower you amazing people, you amazing builders out there in the audience building on stacks. Um, it's a beautiful sunny Friday here in Brooklyn after a couple of days of, of post-hurricane maelstrom out there. So I'm I'm happy, I'm here, I'm ready to talk subnets. I'm thrilled to be at another Bitcoin Unleashed. Uh, Miami was literally my favorite moment in the history of stacks. Uh, the excitement of the ecosystem was exploding. Um, it, it was evident that the right people were flocking to stacks, you know, the creatives, the builders, the big thinkers. Um, so we move forward with a builders edition of Bitcoin Unleashed. And I'm here today with, I am honored to be here today with Sarala, uh, one of the brains behind the engineering team working on uh, subnets. Um, wow, Sarala, the last time we spoke was a couple months ago, safe to say you had a busy summer um, hacking behind the keyboard. Uh, why don't you say hello, give us a brief intro, and maybe what we'll be talking about today. The honor is all mine, Joe, and happy birthday, and thanks for spending this time with us. <laughs> Um, and yes, Sunny indeed. Uh, I'm director of engineering here at Hero, uh, and I work with some really brilliant people here. I love building on stacks, helping our developers and enhancing their experience here while they're using our products at Hero. And I love the community. I also love Fridays and love rings of power, no matter what the naysayers are saying at the moment. So thrilled to discuss all things subnets. It's been a busy summer indeed. Just to recap, you've heard Hyperchain's transition to subnets. We have an NFT use case live on testnet. We've been harping about that quite a bit. But here, uh, we are here to talk about three main things. Uh, the performance expectations that you would like to see and we want to see on subnets and what we have done in terms of benchmarking and improvements, the present and future roadmaps, and how you all can help us as developers uh, going forward for subnets. Amazing. Thanks for the introduction. Good to hear. Um, hashtag Team Galadriel. Uh, so, sounds like subnets are a huge deal. Uh, scalability is always an uphill battle for each and every blockchain network out there. Um, but we think subnets is a great Goldilocks compromise of scalability and security. Um, so, tell us a little bit about those benchmarks and performance you were talking about. Yeah, um, just to take a step back, even before we talk about performance benchmarking, right now we are in a fully trusted federated model um, of subnets or flavor of subnets, as I uh, like to call it, which is based on a BFT protocol. So miners are responsible for issuing subnet blocks, users then validate, but sub subnet miners control the withdrawals. That's the gist of it. Uh, improving performance on this BFT-based protocol, the expectations are really, really high. So drum roll, uh, based on our initial performance benchmarking and some optimizations that we've done, we are able to see up to 10K transactions that will be packed per block. So that is 100K transactions for every 10 blocks. And we are also expecting around 15 seconds of block confirmation times. Uh, if there are no pending transactions. So that's a huge, huge um, uh, improvement from what we are seeing currently on L1, where we see a few hundreds of transactions being packed per block. Um, and here's how we've done that. Uh, it included two big changes. One uh, is around the mempool optimizations, uh, which thereby include uh, database optimizations and how we query fee rates in the mempool. So huge shout out to the blockchain team, especially Greg and Bryce who've been work on, working on this. Um, and then the second leg of it is more related to the MARF changes. So to recap, right now we have MARF on layer one, but we don't really need that on subnets because subnets don't allow forks. So we are able to take the current implementation of MARF as it stands and move it to a more key value structured implementation using a SQL Lite database. So these key value updates um, with each new block and those values will be stored in the database uh, together with these two changes, that's the mempool optimizations and the MARF optimizations are leading to huge, huge uh, improvements uh, that I mentioned there. Um, and the team are busy wrapping up 
some of the loosens around both of these and will be available on testnet post 2.1 code complete. My gosh, I love it. Improvements, scalability improvements. Great to hear about like uh, some of the under the hood and uh, feature additions there. Um, some glossary for those blockchain be beginners out there. Um, BFT is Byzantine fault tolerance. It's how nodes are kind of communicating to each other. It's, uh, it talks about the Byzantine generals problem where if two generals are planning to attack a city, but it's pre-internet, pre-telephones, how do they signal to each other, yo, it's time to attack. That's kind of the whole problem blockchains are tackling. How do two nodes talk to each other and trust what each other are saying? The other thing you said there was MARF. No, that isn't a weird way a dog barks. Um, a MARF is actually a Merkelize Adaptive Radix Forest, which is kind of a data structure tree that um, constitutes commitments to the blockchain and, and uh, legitimizes a certain branch. So a lot going on there with subnets. Um, yes, technology sounds amazing, but how do we use it? What kind of products will be supporting subnets and subnets will plug into, so to speak? First of all, thanks for demystifying all the jargon that I'm throwing at people. <laughs> really appreciate that. <laughs> uh, yes, uh, so currently the team are working on 2.1, which is very, very mission critical for subnets. So um, the withdrawals on subnets, for example, are dependent on 2.1 features. The multi-party contracts, the multi-party signers are both contingent on 2.1 changes for signing. So subnet support spawns across our products. That includes our API. Uh, now API needs support for these deposits and withdrawals that we've talked about. So deposit is when uh, you submit a request or transfer a token NFT or your funds from L1 to a subnet. And withdrawal is when you're doing the reverse, when you are moving back your NFT or your funds back from L2 to L1 via the subnet's contract. So API needs support. Um, so we're adding new handlers uh, to deposit uh, for deposits and withdrawals and a new endpoint for querying pending withdrawals um, to be able to retrieve at what height uh, the withdrawal is happening or the proof information for that withdrawal. Uh, and these need to pass to the contract. So that's on the API side. Now moving to a layer uh, next to it is Stacks.js, where we're adding helper methods or structures to Stacks.js to ease this integration into subnets. So creating the transactions already is uh, possible in Stacks.js today. So there's no additional support that is needed from Stacks.js there. But there we are adding some really nice to have helpers uh, that might help developers to uh, really deal with these withdrawals and uh, deposits easily. So that's two. And the third one is around Clarinet, which is at the center of getting started with subnets, spinning up a subnet uh, miner, testing your contracts on a subnet. Um, so now you can spin up your own subnet node and get an early flavor feel of uh, this component using Clarinet Integrate. Um, we are very, very close to releasing Clarity, Clarinet 1.0, counting hours almost. Um, so with that, you'll be able to run Clarinet Integrate and spin up a, a subnets node and tinker with it and debug it. All right, all right, I'm following you. Uh, you could use a subnet for some compartmentalized functionality. Let's say a big NFT mint is going down and you want to uh, have faster throughput to get mints through. Um, perfect. There's also a great tutorial that Hero happened to put out where you're taking an NFT, you're minting it on an L1, transferring it to the subnet, uh, doing things with it, and then you withdraw it back to the L1. Um, pretty logical. It happens just as other blockchain transactions happen. And, and that subnet is controlled by its own dedicated smart contract that, that's kind of telling it what to do. Um, so another big development on the horizon is the launch of Stacks 2.1. A lot of talk about it, uh, a lot of uh, advisory boards and committees coming together. The whole engineering talent of the community is coming together to, to think what improvements can we make? Uh, what does Stacks need? What love does Stacks need right now? So how do subnets and Stacks 2.1 play nice together? I guess, um, what are the plans for upcoming uh, development and just how does it tie into the eventual launch of Stacks 
Yeah, so Stacks 2.1, like I mentioned, is super mission critical for withdrawals to work on subnets. Uh, right now, we're focusing the wider blockchain engineering teams across the ecosystem are focused on code complete for 2.1. They're of their multiple phases for testnet availability, et cetera. So soon after code complete, once the public testnet is available, people should be, will be able to use 2.1 and subnets together and Clarinet integrate uh, to start tinkering around, spinning up their own subnets, writing a subnet contract, piggybacking on what uh, the use case that you just mentioned. Um, so there's uh, there's a lot uh, happening in that space. Um, post 2.1, however, we have a very exciting roadmap that I'm uh, very thrilled to share actually. Um, there's two main streams uh, that the team are focused on in terms of subnet features after the NFT use case. One is rollups, and you've probably heard the term rollups quite a bit, and I will try to demystify that a little bit. And then two is around abstraction and having different flavors of subnets. Uh, I believe uh, a multiverse of subnets uh, will evolve and different flavors of subnets would mean different flavors of VMs of those subnets, different consensus protocols within each of those subnets. So very exciting, long, term plan for subnets um, evolution. So first, uh, on the rollups, um, right now we are at a fully trusted federated model of uh, BFT consensus mechanism where users trust the miners who are running that subnet. So they give arbitrary control to those miners. However, believing in this decentralization that we all are fans of in the Bitcoin community as well as Stacks, uh, the natural evolution is having a more decentralized flavor of those subnets, and that's where rollups come in. So optimistic rollups is our current uh, current uh, focus, which provide um, alternative strategies for moving towards that decentralized version of subnets. So the principal aim of a rollup uh, is to really reduce costs to economics of scale, um, and the subnets contract thereby needs to be extended into a more challenge response protocol for bad blocks because now you're taking the fully trusted model and making it a more decentralized version. So for any bad blocks that are generated by this L2, now you want to have a more challenge response, move towards a more challenge response model. So the miners in the federation keep deposits in the subnet contract at all times. So this protocol will uh, give the ability for any challenger to execute blocks by themselves and discover the invalidity of the chain state. So remember that subnets do not allow for forks. Uh, having this model will allow for more decentralization to happen thereof. So that's one. Um, two, on the abstraction side, um, the Clarity VM as it stands today uh, is very, uh, the subnet as it stands today relies on Clarity VM um, and operates on that instruction language. Uh, and it cannot run smart contracts, which are not Clarity specific. So we're building an abstraction layer, taking the public functions that are in the Clarity VM. So people can then implement those public functions and add their own flavors. So if you have an EVM that you really fancy, um, you can then implement those public functions and build an EVM-based uh, subnet there. Um, so this is a serious, serious undertaking uh, because a Clarity compiler as it stands today uh, does not really allow for that. Um, so building that abstraction layer will allow other entities in our ecosystem to then able to do what they want to do uh, in terms of different VMs for those subnets. Think about um, support for other smart contracting languages like Solidity, which is now possible via this abstraction. I know that's a lot of information I threw at you. So just unpacking uh, abstraction so you can have multiple flavors of VM and roll up so you can scale and move towards a decentralized version of subnets. Yeah. No, all right, all right. I'm with you. Thanks for outlining some of the components of it. There, it's it is a Herculean technical undertaking, but a very very integral one um, when it comes to just operation and functionality of the blockchain. Um, hey, I love fruit rollups as a kid. I'm I'm sure I'll love optimistic rollups. Uh, okay, so. You kind of outlined it all there. If there's one thing that maybe you've been alluding to, and we certainly believe a hero, it's 
test, 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 then test again, and then give it to someone else to test for you. Uh, so what's going down the next six months with subnets? Um, I guess, uh, how are you trying to gather feedback? How is getting, getting audited? Um, yeah. Yeah, there's a lot that needs to happen for mainnet readiness. So we plan to launch subnets on mainnet by Q1. Um, for that, we need to test this thoroughly. We have a solid team of engineers, but the call to action for anyone listening, including developers and users, is to test the hell out of subnets as it stands today on testnet. Um, play around with the NFT use case, evaluate the performance numbers that I shared with you, which is 10K transactions per block and 15 second block confirmation times. Um, so help us test that. Um, and if you are an NFT marketplace and if you are a crypto punk or a mega punk um, uh, from, from those teams or any new NFTs, we would love to see an NFT case study happen on testnet and evaluate these benchmarks and help us fight, identify any bugs thereof. Um, so Q1 is the date, uh, mark your calendars. Early Q1 is where we are hoping for subnets um, in mainnet to launch. So calling all developers uh, immediately after 2.1 code complete and when public testnet is available, help us test this. And one more thing, yes, as we are gearing up uh, and relying on our community and our developers. We're also auditing subnets in behind the scenes. So we make sure that we don't uh, ship this with vulnerabilities. So uh, fingers crossed that will be on time for Q1. Amazing. A lot of people will be looking forward to ski season. I will be looking forward to subnet season come uh, January 2023. Um, amazing. You heard it. Here first, people. Uh, testnet is ready. We the gates are open. We need developers to stress test it in all different use cases: the NFT marketplaces, the DeFi swapping protocols, um, everything. Uh, we need to learn all the edge cases as well as all of the classic commonplace uh, crypto operations. Um, do you have any closing thoughts for the audience, Sarala? Before we hand it back over. Got just a couple yes. minutes left. Yeah, I'm very thrilled about subnets and the future uh, it holds and how it will evolve stacks overall. Uh, as a team are all, also working on L1 changes that Muni mentioned, um, give us time to test this, uh, test this with us. Uh, we are relying on your experience and on your feedback. So the key takeaways really that I wanna leave uh, with all of you are really three things. One is the performance. Expect 10K transactions packed per block um, and 15 second block confirmation times. Expect uh, roll ups and optimistic roll ups and it down the line zero knowledge proofs uh, in the future roadmaps in 2023 and help us test this and launch your NFT marketplace here on subnets. And Amazing. Uh, anything else? No, that's it. Uh, it was a great conversation. Thank you. And over to you and Kyle. Yeah, I mentioned that NFT tutorial, dive into that, spin up your own subnet uh, node. It is it is there and ready to, to be experimented with. And uh, we don't know unless you tell us. Uh, your feedback is absolute, feedback is a gift, they say. So absolutely critical. Uh, we want you to break things. We want you to stress test things. Um, it takes a village to raise a blockchain. Uh, thank you guys so much. Uh, looking forward to subnets on the horizon. Sarala, thank you for making time to bring your subject matter expertise from the hacker room in here to Bitcoin Unleashed. That's all we've got. Kyle, I'm handing it back to you. Uh, thank you everyone for your time and attention. Cheers.